In this Power BI basic series video, I'm going to be touching on DAX and Power Query again with a little bit of data modeling to be able to show you how to replicate a VLOOKUP like you do in Excel, but in Power BI. With that in mind, let's move over to Power BI. So we're going to be covering the lookups. This can be done in DAX and Power Query, although there is another way that doesn't use DAX or Power Query, which can pull through the data into this table that I've done here. If you want to replicate this table, all I've done is taken the data table here and then pulled through the different columns in the order that they are in the file using the table visualization. So again, move over to the table view in Power BI and then we want to create a new column. This way, we're going to create a column that pulls through the continent in DAX format. So let's call this continent DAX. And then in DAX one, you'll need to use a formula called lookup value which is basically your lookup and the difference to lookup value and VLOOKUP in this case, you want to go, what's the table you want to get the data from and that point. So because we're using location as our lookup value, our unique identifier. So what we want to do is find the location in the new table, which is what I've loaded in. It's in the same data set. It's just under a different tab. And so you can just load that in just like you do on the first video. So what we need to do is find the one that we want to pull through, which is the continent. And then we then need to tell it what we're going to use from that table as our unique identifier, in this case, location. And then where we want to pull it into, which is the current table we're in now. And if we start typing in location, it will pop up. And then we do close bracket. And then you can see your lookup. But now you actually have this one here. You can now drop it into your table and then you can see all the different continents. Now, if you wanted to add additional ones, you could sit there and then add in different ones that way. However, this is where the good old Power Query comes in very, very, very handy. What you can do is go into your Power Query editor, find your table, and instead of adding a column, which you think, okay, I can do look up, da 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 da. Now, what we want to do is go up to home and then go to what is merge queries. And what merge queries does is allow you to find the table you want to get the data from. You then can select what you want as your identifier. It will then let you know if it finds matches. But also the other handy thing about using a Power Query to do any sort of V lookups is you can select more than one field to look up. So if you wanted to create your own unique identifier in Excel, you would normally have to merge a few cells together to then give you your own unique identifier. Where here, if you hold down shift, you click on which one you want and then you get other options. Now, when you do that, as long as in the other table you do the same, then it will be in order. But say if you had month and you did month as number three and everything like that, it wouldn't find a match. And at the moment, obviously it doesn't find any match because I've done completely different ones here. But if we go back and give us location like so, we can then do okay. And then it pulls up a step. So it doesn't pull you through all the information because it's actually asking you, well, what information do you actually want to bring in? And then once you're there, there's these two little arrows in the top corner. If you click on that, and then opens up to give you what data you want to pull in. So if you imagine you had a table that was a lot of columns, then this you'll be able to just select which ones you wanted. And if you wanted to, you can keep this name or if you're going to bring through something that I don't know, it might be duplicated, it might be that, or you might want to remember what the table is, you can leave on this ticked and what it will do, it will create a table name first and then full stop and then add in the different column headers. But I don't want that for now. And then as we use location as our main pickup, we can get rid of that. So then we're only bringing through continent, median age and population. And if we click OK, 
we then have all that information pulled through. So as you can see, different countries there, given your continent, the median age, and then your population. And then as always with Power Query, once you're done, just double check that the formatting is good. Yep. And then click close and apply. And then magic, you have your continent, your median age and your population, all nice and quick compared to if you did this manually. And then you can start dropping in the new columns that you've got, which are median age, continent and the population. If you were building out on a table and you wanted to keep adding in more and more information, that would make sense to keep using the Power Query because if you need to do any bucketing, anything, any grouping, anything like that, you'll need to be able to build out on a table because you need to be able to actually see it on the table to be able to actually link it with a column. However, if you just needed to be able to pull through your information into a table like this, there is an easier way, and that is to use the table information already. And if you try and do this currently, it will break. And the reason is there's no connection. One of the great things about Power BI is that you can do a lot of modeling. And the handy thing of the modeling is that it gives you a lot of scope to be able to create links to almost create your own tables. So instead of having to worry about creating mass tables so you can filter by bucket and all those kind of things, you can have separate tables that will be able to link to each table as long as it's unique amount in it. And as we know with this particular one here, everything is just one location and that's how comes we're able to do, sort of do a look up and then pull through the continent, the median age and the population. So if you were to point from the new table into your main table for the location, it will create what is a connection. And what the connection is doing is pretty much similar to what you saw when you were doing the merge is that it's picking up the location and the location and then it's picking out many to one. This makes the relationship active because it's the, currently the only one there. If you have multiple relationships coming off the table, only have one is active. And the reason why you might have multiple connections is say like if you had a date table, calendar table, you might have various dates that might be going into that table. And then you can use DAX to be able to, in a sense, activate that connection using user relationship. But for this, all we're doing is just the one for now. So that we've got this as active and then we've got a single crossword direction, meaning it's just happening in one way. So once that's done, as you can see, it's already connected and you know you've got your connection. So now it's picking up here to here. This table now knows, ah, any information that comes from here, I can then use in here. So if we go back, we no longer have the error. And then if we add in median age and population, it's done the same. And then just to double check that that's the case, let's just bring in population from what we did in Power Query. And as you can see, all matches up. And that's all because of the connection. But like I said, if you need to be able to do everything in one table and create groupings, buckets, anything like that, do so with a merge. Very rarely would I use DAX to do this, but as I showed earlier, it is possible to use DAX. But I find if you're going to be doing any form of what is a VLOOKUP in Power BI, use Power Query and do a merge that way. So yeah, if you like the video, please comment, like and subscribe. And as always, let me know what you thought, what you would like. So until the next video.